Okay, episode three. In this scenario, your bird is now missing. You've been flying it, maybe it's wearing bells, maybe it's got a fantastic working transmitter on, but for some reason, you don't know where the bird is. So you've not been able to track it on your phone, for example, or using a receiver with the radio telemetry. You've no idea where it is, so you're now trying to find where your bird is. And you might think to yourself, oh, this is a needle in a haystack situation. Where on earth could my bird be? Well, the first thought might be that we're going to get in touch with the local press, the local radio. We're going to put it all over social media. We're going to put flyers up. We'll do all that so everybody knows. I wouldn't suggest doing that. I'm not saying don't do that, but I would, I would be careful. It's my experience that when you do that, you tell everybody there's a bird of prey loose, suddenly everyone's seeing a bird of prey everywhere. They're seeing pigeons and think it's a lost falcon. They're seeing crows and thinking it's your lost hawk. People will see something fly past the window and think that'll be it. And what happens is you get all sorts of phone calls of potential sightings all over the place. You'll even have people ring you who are miles away, like you might be on the south coast of England and you get someone ringing you near Edinburgh, for example, in Scotland, and they'll say, I don't know if your bird may have flown this far, but I've just seen a falcon flying or something like that. And then what happens is you are inundated with possible sightings and you have no idea which one is the right sighting. So even if you had 50 volunteers who could drive off looking for birds, it's still really a waste of resources. So you want to be very careful with that. Now, if you go ahead and do that kind of promotion of please help me find my bird, and you put it on the lost Facebook Birds of Prey pages, and you contact the IBR, the Independent Bird Register, let them know about it as well. You've done all those things. If you do get then some sightings, you want to only check out the most credible ones. Depending on your bird, will probably be the ones that are the most local. The next thing to say is that most birds of prey are quite territorial. So for example, if you have a Harris hawk and it's killed a pigeon and it's flown into the tree somewhere and you can't find it anywhere, the likelihood is it will stay in that area of cluster of trees or wherever it may be because it's thought, well, I've caught something here. I'll catch something here again and it's less likely to then fly too far away. So you really want to concentrate your searching in those areas where your bird was originally lost. The next thing to think about is at the moment the bird flew off, because that's essentially what's happened here. Think about the weather. Is it windy? Which way is the wind directing you to? Also, your bird, how well do you know it? Is your bird likely to sit in a tree? Does your bird prefer to sit on buildings? And does your bird prefer to sit on the ground somewhere? Is your bird a super tame owl, for example, or a, a sort of hand-reared raptor of some sort, it's quite noisy, and will get peckish and then start following people around? You know, where could it be? Try and concentrate your searches in the areas where it just most likely is to sit. I just sat editing the video and I suddenly thought I hadn't mentioned about using other wild birds to track your bird. So if you're looking for your bird, you can't see it anywhere, maybe look out for other bird activity. This is things like crows making lots of noise, seagulls circling makes up lots of noise, blackbirds chirping away. You might see other corvids like magpies, jackdaws, etc., sort of in and out of the trees making noise, drumming in and out, because it's quite possible your bird has landed somewhere where other birds are going to be disturbed and they're going to be making lots of racket. Many times in the past, I've used wild British birds to help find my bird that's disappeared over into another tree. What we're trying to do here is find our missing bird so we can then revert to what I talked about in episode two of this little trilogy of videos, which is how to get your bird now down from the tree or wherever it is sat in. Overall, I just say never give up. Keep trying to find your bird and do everything you can that's possible to get your bird back. I've seen many cases of birds missing, which are often posted online, and some never get found, but many do, even after a few days. I even know stories of people who've got birds back who've been missing for many months. Maybe not years, but definitely many months. So anything is possible. But essentially, we want to hopefully avoid losing our birds in the first place. So if you've done everything I talked about in step one, or episode one of this trilogy, as it were, then hopefully you'll never even have to visit the advice I've given you in step two. 
but worst case scenario, if you do, that's not too bad. So, whatever your endeavours in fall coming out, wish you all the luck and please do comment with any questions below, any advice you've got and any video suggestions as well, I also welcome. But that's all from me for now, thanks for watching.